Welcome to our continued walk through Psalm 23. Uh, this is session 9 of our um, look at Psalm 23, looking for helps and hope and direction and strength from uh, this marvelous piece of scripture that God has given to us. Let me read it again, um, and hopefully over the course of time you're memorizing this, and hopefully over the course of time these different phrases and thoughts and promises will become very real to you, very powerful to you, and uh, God will use those to help you uh, when you find yourself in the valley or when you find yourself surrounded by enemies or when you find yourself, when everything's good as it ought to be, you still have to realize God is with you and has provided that and you need to be thankful. So just all through life, uh, may Psalm 23 be helpful to you uh, and helpful to those around you that you use it with um, and you're, you're working with them. So here it is again, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My, just a, many, many, many promises and pieces there that are very helpful. Uh, these words from a website called uh, Faith, Faith Giant. <clears throat> the world is now experiencing a dreadful pandemic, so I'm guessing that they wrote this in um, 2020. Many people succumb to their hopelessness and fear. Many people succumb to hopelessness and fear. A lot of people are suffering mentally emotionally, financially. What humanity needs now is the restoration of hope and joy. People need comfort and encouragement. That's why Psalm 23 is critically relevant even today. People need to know this beautiful Psalm of David to reorient and renew their thinking. And that may be true with you. I mean, maybe you are, uh, your hope and your joy are dissipated uh, and, and you're suffering mentally, emotionally, financially. You know, but Psalm 23 brings encouragement and a great reminder that God is our shepherd and he will never abandon us. The intimate portrayal of God as a shepherd is what makes Psalm 23 unique and unforgettable. The psalmist genuinely expressed his understanding and experience with God as his shepherd. The profound way of weaving David's testimony to bring glory to God through the psalm is utterly magnificent. It is a wonderful masterpiece of David that contains encouragement and awe-inspiring truths. We believe that to be true, don't we? Okay, so we've kind of been uh, unpacking this. So we talked about the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. There's our eight. We're at nine, right? For his namesake. Hmm. For his namesake. And let me just, uh, you know, uh, two or three thoughts in that. I mean, first of all, his reputation is on the line. If you call him yours and he calls you his, hmm, and he says, I'm a shepherd. And he says, I am with you and I can carry you and I can do all this. His reputation is on the line. God has put himself in public and God has declared made promises and God has uh, uh, set himself up. Is he going to fail? Does he fail? Well, sometimes in our mind he may fail, but he doesn't fail. You know, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just reminded again of Joseph, you know, uh, Joseph is hauled off into slavery, and when it all pans out, when it all settles out, he's the number two guy in the whole world. So initially it looked like bad news, uh, but it ended up really being great news. So again, things work out. Right now, at this particular time in your life, you may feel like that God has failed you, but I, I'm here to promise you and remind you that God never fails, never, ever fails. So let me just give you a few verses. God, who this God is, he says, for my name's sake. Well, what does God say about himself? James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now, let's just go back and think about this. So, you know, we're, we're, we're little sheep. 
green pastures were, were, were protected, were satisfied, were enriched, were content by still waters. We've got peace. There's not commotion. There's a peace that comes over. There's a peace. He restores my soul, my energy, my, my, my emotions, my, uh, my clarity of thinking is restored. He, he restores uh, the joy of my salvation. And then he leads me in a path of rightness, for his name's sake. Where to? Valleys of shadow of death. Okay, so God says, I've, I've strengthened you. I've equipped you. I've given you rest. I've given you food. I've given you time to mature. I've given you time to get strengthened. Now I'm going to take you into some difficult times. Hmm. But we have, we're reminded that God never does anything quickly, never does anything, and then has to do a retake or rethink or reset on that. Uh, what God says, he says, there is no shadow of turning with him. So what does he say back in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1? For all the promises of God are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So all his promises are yes. It's not, well, maybe, well, sort of, well, maybe, yes, and maybe, no. Well, yes, but, or yes, and, or yes, or. No, they're yes. I go to prepare a place for you, okay? What's he say to John? That's in John uh, 14. Uh, and I, I'm coming back for you. John uh, 10. Um, I give them eternal life, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. My Father is greater than all, has given them unto me, and, is, and, 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 and he, he gives eternal life. And he holds and no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. And verse 30, I and my Father are one, held by two immutable forces. Well, what about John 6? Um, all the Father gives me will come to me, and he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Okay? God's promises are yes. And amen. And from us glory, right? Or there's no shadow of turning uh, with God. All right, so God, for his name's sake, God leads us on this journey, this path of righteousness. Righteousness means he's going to purge, means he's up to something in our lives. Well, back to James chapter 1. Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into trials. Now, we're on this journey. We're on this path of righteousness. Well, what God up to? God's up to maturing me. God's up to bettering me. God's up to growing me. God's up to uh, enriching me. He says, count it joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing your faith produces patience. That patience have its perfect work, that you might be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So, God takes us through trials and tests, you know. You had to spend 50 hours learning how to drive. You had to take a driver's test. You had to take an oral test. You had to take a written, a, 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 an actual test, a written test, right? And a driving test. That's a trial. That's a testing. Why? So you can drive. Life's better if you can drive than walking or riding your bicycle, right? So God leads us in this path, and it says, for his name's sake. And let me just flip that. So God's reputation is on the line, and God will not fail. You may think that, you may feel that, but God never, ever, ever, ever fails. Never, he never violates his word or his promises. The flip side of that is, you and I have responsibility, for his name's sake, to to honor him, to exalt his name. I, I think about um, Job. I mean, all these problems come to Job, and Job says, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Or Mary, you're going to have bear a child, and you're not married, and all that kind of stuff, and she is the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me. Um, we, we need to, although we don't understand, we don't like, we don't agree, or we don't, uh, uh, we, we, we're just troubled by it, we still got to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. We don't want to mock him. We don't want to belittle him. Back in the Ten Commandments, he says, he says, Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. For the Lord's name's sake. So don't 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 swear at the Lord. Don't blaspheme the Lord. Don't use his name vainly or, or in a mean way. Because it says that he's a jealous God. In uh, chapter 20, verse 5 of, of Exodus, he's a jealous God. So that, that we, we, we're on this journey, paths of righteousness, for our betterment, for our good. God's going to use that. Don't um, trust him in that, for his name's sake. But at the same point, don't belittle, don't, don't denigrate his name. That would not be pleasing to him. So uh, again, for, he says, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God's reputation is on the line. God's promises are on the line. God's word is on the line. And God never, never fails. So we can trust him, even though what we're headed into 
is not going to be necessarily easy, pleasant, or agreeable, yet God is going to carry us and going to uh, get us through all that. So again, for his name's sake, a critical piece, a critical thought there from Psalm 23. All right, good enough? All right, till next time.